everyone, it's Colin, how's it going? It seems like all anyone ever talks about anymore are smartphones and tablets. Does that mean that the days for the PC are numbered? So I think it's pretty clear that tablets and smartphones, mobile devices, really are here to stay. They used to be a real niche thing. I remember when smartphones were big and clunky, slow, they were still more of a cell phone and a PDA than anything else. They weren't the integrated communication devices that we have now. And in some ways it's really kind of a misnomer to continue to call them smartphones, considering that actually talking on the phone, voice communication is an increasingly smaller and smaller part of what they do and what they're used for. That said, it's amazing how far they've come. Tablets are really, I think, just an iteration on smartphones. Smartphones are kind of a do-it-all device in many ways, uh, not just in terms of communication, but also in terms of productivity. They've taken the place of a lot of different separate products that we used to use, and they've also created new market segments on their own. Um, right off the bat, they've taken the place of needing to carry a separate smartphone and PDA. Um, and if you never had a PDA, then it'd be like some sort of personal organizer, like a little notepad or, you know, contact list, your, your little black book, they used to call it, uh, where you'd have people's contact information. It's also fostered new ways of communication, um, not just voice and not just text messaging, which we had on, on dumb, you know, non-smartphones before. Uh, granted, it was not nearly as easy because you had to press the buttons over and over again because all you had was the 10 key. But all these new IP, you know, internet-based messaging types, some of them more real-time than others. Uh, you've obviously got kind of iterations on SMS text messaging uh, like iMessage or Google Chat. But you've also got these pseudo real-time type of messaging platforms that also kind of blend into social media uh, like Line or Twitter. Uh, Instagram is kind of an, really kind of an iteration on Twitter where it's just pictures. Um, all these different ways to communicate at various levels, which I think is amazing. And it seems the way, that's kind of the way that productivity really has headed. It, it used to be where it seemed like you would do your work, do your job in a very specific set way. Uh, you would use specific tools to do it. You would communicate in very certain ways. Now it seems like it's more like, this dude just totally ran the light, wasn't even paying attention. That black car, by the way. Um, it, 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 now it seems like you can, it, it's really opened up. You can do your work, you can be productive in many different ways because of the smartphone, uh, because of these mobile devices, tablets too, really. Uh, and you can start a conversation on one platform and continue it on another platform. Uh, it, it lends a tremendous amount of flexibility that we never really had with traditional personal computers. Tablets, uh, you know, the, the, at first the big thing was, you know, tablets can be just as mobile as your smartphone. Uh, I remember when the iPad was first announced, they offered that 3G option uh, where you had cellular data with it. Uh, they still sell tablets like that, but that's not the way that the vast majority of tablets are sold. The vast majority of tablets are just Wi-Fi only. And if you need mobile data when you're not near Wi-Fi, when you're driving in the car or walking down the street or whatever, well, that's just what your smartphone is for. Tablets have, in my eyes, kind of eroded part of PC's market share. And when I say PC, I mean both Mac and Windows, just any sort of uh, traditional computing appliance, something with a keyboard and a pointing device and an object-oriented desktop and, and that sort of thing. 
tablets have, I think, eroded some of the PC's market share, but that's not necessarily due to the fault of the PC. I don't think a lot of people who have bought tablets have really bought them because of a true need for ultimate portability. I'm sure that's a factor, and I'm sure the smaller, thinner, lighter form factor of tablets is definitely appreciated. But considering tablets, at least, you know, really good tablets, don't cost that much less than a decent laptop, what I see tablets doing is taking the place of PCs simply because the way people use computers has changed. Tablets, for me, have never really been about replacing tasks that I do on a PC. For me, I actually use a tablet really to replace analog media. Um, here's a great example. I use my iPad every day, but I use it in place of reading books and magazines before I go to bed. I stopped doing that. I used to have this pile of books and magazines on the nightstand. I don't anymore. I just have my iPad there. And what having the iPad does for me is it gives me this greater variety of content. I can be laying there and think about, well, you know, I want to look up this thing or case in point, I, I want to do some research for an upcoming video. And normally if I'm just laying in bed and all I've got are books and magazines, it would be quick, quick I need to jot that down so I remember to do it tomorrow or whatever. Now with an iPad there, it's just like, well, shoot, let me switch over to the web browser and hit up Wikipedia or, or whatever source and, and try to find the information that I'm looking for then and there. And then I can switch to another tab and open up like Google Docs and make some notes. So it's, it's not so much replacing what I can do on a PC because I can do all that stuff on a PC. It's opening up other avenues. And that's really where I think things are headed. Yes, are we going to see continued erosion of PC market share because of mobile devices? I, I think to some extent, but I think to say it's being done at the expense of PCs is perhaps a bit presumptuous because the people who say that are looking at sales figures of all these different devices. Well, sales figures only tell one part of the story. One thing to think about with sales figures and the trend for quite a while now has been, especially, especially Windows computers, that people are replacing them less frequently and they're just not buying new ones. They, uh, the, the common belief as to that is, you know, mobile devices. People are just doing that kind of work on their smartphone. They're, they're buying a tablet and they're doing that work on the tablet. That may be true, but the other thing to think about is, in some ways, we've kind of hit a plateau with computing power. I mean, there's still more gains to be had. We can still scale out, you know, computers that come with quad core processors could come with eight core processors, you know, continue to, to basically tack on more horsepower instead of making the one CPU just continue to go faster. But we've seen kind of a plateau in computing power simply because what we ask computers to do hasn't really gotten a whole lot more complicated. We don't really see that many applications in use by the majority of people that really could perform that much faster if you threw more hardware at them. Things are pretty fast, at least satisfyingly fast. Back in the 80s and 90s, when computers had kind of a feeling as to whether they were fast or slow. You know, you could sit in front of a computer and just click on something, you know, double clicking on the hard drive and seeing how long it would take to open. You could tell right away whether a computer was fast or not based on that. Nowadays, an expensive computer and an inexpensive computer, they both take about the same amount of time to do these basic tasks. So I think that's part of why sales for the PC have been slipping is that computers from four years ago perform 
still pretty well and about as well as computers from today. So, well, if your computer still works, you know, why not keep it? Microsoft in some ways has also hurt the overall sales because they've been giving away Windows 10. In some ways, I think it's a good business decision for Microsoft to do that because trying to get people off of legacy platforms and onto newer ones simplifies their tasks a lot easier. Instead of having three or four different OSs to worry about patches and compatibility and drivers for, you know, now you've only got one or two. And giving that away is really the only way to get people to, to move that direction. And Apple learned that quite a while ago. Apple's been giving away upgrades to OS X for several years um, and hasn't really been dropping off support for older machines as, as quickly as people would expect them to. And that just helps them out. I mean, they really only have the latest version of, of the Mac OS to worry about. And if things go the way that Microsoft wants, they'll only have Windows 10 to worry about for desktops. Well, it's not quite shaping up that way, but I do see the merit in why they did that. But their traditional model has always been, well, if you want the latest OS, we'll just go out and buy a new computer. I mean, some people would go and buy OS upgrades, they'd buy a, an upgrade copy of Windows, but with how complicated it can be to install Windows and get drivers working and all that kind of stuff, generally people would just be like, well, you know, my computer's three years old, I'll just buy a new one anyway. So by giving away Windows 10 and addressing a lot of those upgrade concerns to make it easy to upgrade, where it's just click, let it go, your computer comes up when it's done upgrading and all the drivers are there, all your devices work, all your files are still there, that took away a lot of the incentive for people to go and buy new computers. So you gotta kinda read between the lines and look at some of the other factors other than just the straight figures and assuming that you know a rise in one graph, you know, a, a chart that shows, well, smartphone sales are going up and another chart that shows that PC sales are going down, you can't necessarily correlate the two. Where do I think things are going? Well, obviously smartphones and tablets are going nowhere. Um, they're going to become just as, if not more, important in our lives. I will admit in some ways it's a bit disturbing how prevalent smartphones have become in our lives um, to the point where people are obsessively checking them. Sometimes you need to do that for work because it's just another way of getting your work done. But, you know, when you're, when you're sitting with your family at dinner and everybody's just staring at their smartphone instead of talking to each other, that's a bit of a problem. I've also thought for a, a while now that smartphones have actually changed the way we communicate and even interact with each other. We're interacting with each other in person less, I feel, than we used to. Uh, we, we now have a chance to think about replies before we actually reply, whereas in person you kind of got to be a bit more on your toes when you're talking with someone. Someone tells you something you know, they're not gonna stand there and wait for five minutes while you think about, well, what kind of tone do I wanna take with, you know, what I wanna say. You can't really hit the delete button when you're talking to somebody. So uh, I, I think smartphones are going to continue to be as important. I think they'll continue to advance, but in some ways I do think that level of, of advancement is going to start slowing down. Uh, smartphones are pretty amazing as it is and new features will continue to come out, but we won't see that rapid pace of advancement like we did between, say, 2008 and 2014. Um, that was really when smartphones just started going nuts uh, in terms of their capabilities. The big question, what's gonna happen with PCs? PC sales are going to continue to decline. I think pretty much everybody accepts that. Are PCs going to go away though? No, I don't think so. And even though people are claiming, oh, well in 10 years, everyone's just gonna do everything within a web browser, which means you can do pretty much everything on a smartphone or a tablet or even another type of simpler device like a Chromebook, that kind of a thing. The thing is there's always going to be people who will need to create the stuff that runs all of that. 
right? You're always going to need web developers. You're always going to need software engineers. Uh, you're always going to need creative people who are skilled at using tools uh, like Illustrator and Photoshop. You're always going to need video editors, people who can run Final Cut, uh, Adobe Premiere, that sort of thing. You know what? I really don't think anyone's going to be cutting together feature films, even in 20 years, on a tablet. I just don't see that. Even if the tablet is powerful enough to do that, I don't see it, simply because of ergonomics and the UI. Tablets are cool, but they're just not as fast to use or as convenient or as effective sometimes for some tasks as just a keyboard and mouse. Tablets don't have as big of a screen in terms of, you know, working area. I love my 27 inch iMac because it's got a big ass screen and I can get a lot of work done on there because it gives me room to spread out. I couldn't imagine trying to edit one of my own videos on an iPad simply because it would be an exercise in frustration. Not only would the preview window be so small, but the precision editing that I would need to do in clipping between you know, one, one video segment and another would get just incredibly frustrating trying to drag a slider back and forth with my finger. It's a lot easier to just click where I want with the pointer. So I, I do think that PCs are going to continue to be around. They will continue to get more powerful. They will continue to evolve. I just hope that they don't get cut down to being just big tablets. I hope that the UI, you know, in terms of operating system, doesn't get too dumbed down. I hope it stays powerful. I hope it stays flexible. Uh, because that's really what people who need to get complicated work done, that's really what they need, is not a simplistic experience like a mobile device offers. So what I'm curious about is what are your thoughts? Have you migrated away from using a personal computer for most of your tasks? Are you doing everything on a phone or a tablet these days? Or does a traditional desktop or laptop still have a major part in your life? And do you see that continuing to be the case? Shout out down in the comments. I'm also curious, as always, if you have any suggestions for future video topics. I may not get to it right away, but they all go on a list and I take a look at it periodically. If you like the video, I would appreciate a thumbs up. If you haven't yet, please subscribe. You'll get notified every time I upload one of these videos or, or another one in the series. If you want to get in touch with me, the best way is Twitter and Instagram. That's at this does not come. And as always, Thanks for watching.